All right, we can do it a million times, so don't worry okay. about it getting perfect. So whenever you're ready, three, two. You need not spend any money at all on yoga props to be a great yogi. Okay, for example, you can retire a soft cloth yoga belt. Just remember to remove the hardware. I'll show you an example. Just to get a little more stretch, okay? Or if you have a soft leather belt, same thing. If you can't bind from behind, this is one way to do it. Also, for stretching, and lengthening the legs. If you can't reach your toes yet, you can always use your soft belt. Also, pillows are great. Re retire a pillow or get some soft pillows or bolsters. If you can't quite get into Hanumanasana yet, which is monkey pose, a pillow can help. So can a bolster. Or even a towel. For this segment of our practice, we're going to discuss yoga on a budget and how you can save money by not spending any money on props. For example, um, you can employ a retired um, belt as a yoga strap. Just make sure you remove the hardware first. And I'll show you ways you can use it. How we bind from behind. Normally, we connect the hands and um, this is how we bind. If you can't quite reach, you can always employ your strap. Or if you're working a flexibility for your hamstrings and you're unable to yet reach for your feet, you can employ your belt as well. Just always make sure that you remove the hardware. Here's another example of a, cl a cloth belt. Um, pillows and towels are great as bolsters. We can use them um, in certain positions. Um, if you say have a neck injury and you're in Shavasana, you can use your pillow or your bolster or your towel for your neck or beneath your knees. And if you're working on your flexibility for Hanumanasana, which is monkey pose, and you don't quite have the flexibility yet and you're cupping your fingers and you're almost there, try working with your pillows or your bolsters to give you that extra height and that's going to help you achieve your asanas with proper alignment. Thank you. For this segment of our yoga practice, we're going to discuss props and safety and in ways we can save some money. For example, you need not spend money on um, yoga props if you're on a budget. You can retire uh, a yoga, you, I'm sorry, cut it, cut. Oh. This segment of our practice, we're going to discuss yoga props and how we can cut. <laughs> the other one was so good. Let's talk yoga props. You need not spend any money on props because you have them in your home. For example, you can retire a belt. Just remember to remove the hardware. I'll show you ways that you can employ a belt in yoga class. For example, just reaching and touching the toes. Okay, take your belt and you can stretch better. Binding from behind. Okay, you need a little extra inch or two. You've got it. You can also take a nice soft belt, cut it in half, and just remember, remove the hardware. If you have um, perhaps orthopedic issues involving your neck or your spine in Shavasana, you can create a bolster with a towel, place it beneath your neck, and resign. We're always trying to enhance our flexibility. Our flexibility is mainly, um, and it mainly comes from our 
our joints. Okay. However, start from pick it up from. We're always trying to increase our flexibility. Okay, we're always trying to enhance our flexibility. Hanumanas. We're always trying to enhance. Right. Start from zero. Okay. Yeah. We're always trying to enhance our flex. We're always trying to enhance our flexibility, and a very common pose that I have a lot of requests for is. Sorry. Let's do it like this again. We're all trying to enhance our flexibility. Everyone loves Hanumanasana, and everyone wants to do Hanumanasana. And everyone can do Hanumanasana with the help of props. I'll show you how. Hanumanasana is monkey pose. With the help of pillows and bolsters, I'll show you how you can get that little extra uh, ability to enhance the hamstrings and the upper quadrants of the quadricep muscles by just applying some retired pillows, some throw pillows, even using towels rolled up as bolsters, and then cupping your fingers and getting that little extra height so you can achieve this pose. What do you think? It was so funny. Okay, let's do this. All right. Okay. Okay, another way we can increase our uh, flexibility by the use of some throw pillows in our home uh, is, um, I'll give you an example, Hanumanasana. It's a, a favorite pose of many of my students. And it looks like this. Basically a split. It requires um, loosening of the upper quadrants of the quadricep muscles as well as um, hamstring flexibility. We, you can cup your fingers and uh, you know get a little extra height and when you have that little extra height you can actually take a throw pillow, a bolster you created with your towel, another pillow and find that by cupping your fingers you actually can um, obtain Hanumanasana pose and there you've got it. Like that. Love it. Okay. I'm going to stay to the side of my mouth. Okay. Okay, so inhale today and then exhale yesterday. Inhale, look up, chest lift and hold. Exhale down. Two steps back into your plank pose, shoulders over the wrist. Nice and slow, Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. Lengthen your right leg, keeping the front hip down. Bend the knee, draw the knee into the chest, drop the foot, turn the back foot out, pressing the toe into the earth. Press against the earth, arms come up over the head for your warrior one. How's that? I'm sure to you. Okay. Remember to always look within. Your yoga journey actually begins off and not on your mat. As we begin class, we like to put an intention, a devotional prayer, something positive into our practice. So let's take a moment to close our eyes and think of something positive, be it for ourselves, for someone we love, for the state of our country, for our pets, for anything personal to us that is important. Cut, cut. Oh, that's a, that, was a, that was good. Okay. All right. So you win. As a yoga teacher, I can tell you that your yogic journey does not begin on the mat. It begins off the mat. When we begin our yoga practice, we like to put in an intention to our practice. An intention is a devotional prayer of goodwill. So be it for you, be it for your loved one, your family, our nation, your pets. We're going to close our eyes now and think about that 
intention. Okay, so please take a moment to do so. Okay, as we're seated, remember, always pin your navel to your spine, draw the lower abdomen in, the oblique muscles, which are located on the sides, and uh, lift the uh, upper abdomen as well. Engage your entire core. Close your eyes. Draw your shoulders over your hips. Your shoulders should be down, back, and relaxed. You want to keep your facial muscles soft. Tilt your chin down ever so slightly and keep your teeth separated. When we breathe, we breathe through our nasal passageways. So we inhale two counts, pause, and then exhale four counts. Breathe in, pause, Breathe out. And repeat. I'm the only one breathing through my mouth because I'll be speaking during the class. Okay? Enjoy. Okay. Inhale today and exhale yesterday. Chin to the chest. Inhale, look up. Chest lift and hold. Keep your facial muscles soft. And exhale down. Take two steps back into your plank pose. Shoulders over the hips. I'm sorry, shoulders over the wrists. Can you cut that out? Yeah. Shoulders over the wrists. Roll these elbows in. Roll the elbows in gently. Slowly lower. Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog. Press the hips forward so that they're beneath your shoulders. Keep your elbows soft. Draw your shoulders down, back, and away from your ears, looking up towards the sky. And downward facing dog. Feet hip width. You're going to lift your toes, separate, elongate them, and press them into the earth. Lift your tailbone up towards the sky. Lengthen your right leg, keeping the front of the hip down. Engage the gluteal region. Bend the knee, draw the knee into the chest, drop the foot. You're going to lower the left knee, lengthen the left ankle, press through the first and fifth toe of your right foot. Stabilize the knee over the ankle joint, bring the arms up over the head for proposal pose. Breathing in and out of the nose. The nose is the filter of the body for breath. And now lower your hands for your triangle pose. Drop your chin to your chest. Relax the upper body and breathe. Step your left foot forward. Feet hip width. Drop your chin to your chest. Nice deep breath here. And as you exhale, keep the knees soft and slowly rise. That was beautiful. Okay, now for the left side. Here we go. Inhale today. And exhale yesterday. Lift the belly as you float down. Chin to the chest. Inhale, look up. Chest lift and hold. And exhale down. Take two steps back into your plank pose. Shoulders over wrists. Press through your fingers. Release any wrist or palm uh, pressure you may feel over here. You're going to roll your elbows in and brush them against the body. Lowering nice and slow into Chaturanga Dandasana. Push the hips forward for your upward facing dog. Lift the legs up off the earth. Look up towards the sky. Open up your solar plexus, your heart and your throat chakra. Shoulders are down, back and away from the ears. And downward facing dog. Align your ears with your upper arms here or if you have the flexibility in the shoulders you can drop your sh crown chakra. You can drop your crown chakra here to the earth. Should I repeat that again? That's fine. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, you want me to repeat it? Because it sounds like C H I T. Okay. Align your. I'm sorry. Align your upper arms with your ears here. Or if you have the ability, drop your crown chakra to the earth, keeping the elbows soft. Lengthen your left leg, keeping the front of the hip down, engaging the gluteal muscles. Bend the knee, draw the knee in, drop the foot, lower the left, lower the right knee, lengthen the ankle, press through the first and fifth toes. You're going to come up with the upper body, arm shoulder width for proposal pose. Breathing in and out, looking up towards this beautiful sky. And now drawing your hands down, coming into your triangle, being mindful that you want to relax the trapezius muscles which are located around the shoulder region and the neck region. And we do that by dropping the chin to the chest, stepping the left right foot forward, dropping the chin to the chest, taking a deep breath, inhale, and as you exhale, keeping the knees soft, you're going to slowly rise. Nice deep breath, inhale, bigger bend back, and then exhale. Inhale, look up, and exhale down. Two steps back into your plank pose. You're just, go. You're just going to sweep your right toes off of the earth and engage your gluteal muscles. Roll the elbows in nice, slow, Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog. Draw your shoulders down back and away from your ears. Remember, my mission is to make you leave feeling better than when you arrived, always. And downward facing dog. Lengthen your right leg. Front of the hip is down. Bend the knee, draw the knee in. You're going to drop the foot, turn the back of the foot out, step the front foot forward, separate and elongate the toes, pressing the first and fifth toes into the earth with both feet pressing away from the earth for your warrior one, looking up towards the sky. Now to avoid pronation with the back foot, you want to press that back pinky toe extra firmly into the earth. Slow transition here, right arm forward for warrior two. Glance down, make sure the knee doesn't vacillate and that it's directly over the ankle joint. Reverse warrior coming forward. Or you have the option, if you have the flexibility in the shoulders, to go into your bind here. And a slow transition, we're coming up for Proud Warrior. Nice deep lunge. And now open the arm. Lower your hands. Toes forward. Wide triangle stretch here, and flexing the front foot if possible. Legs are hip width. Step your left foot forward. We're going to place the right foot center. And then what you're going to do is cross your left foot over, creating like a heart shape between both feet. What more, what's more important than the feet, though, however, is um, the position of the, the hips 
and the shoulders, okay? You want to have square hips and shoulders rather than having a perfect heart with your feet and your hip, your hip shifting. And rather than having, let's do this over. Rather than having a perfect heart with your feet and misalignment in the hips, you want to have square between your hips and your shoulders, okay? So if that means widening the feet to have proper alignment, that's okay. Okay, so we're gonna drop our chins to our chest and stretch. And release, feet hip width. Drop your chin to your chest, engage your elbows here. Keep your knees nice and soft. Bend the knees, release the arms, and slowly rise. How's it going so far? How's the hair? Oh. What? You didn't end it. I had to, to, do, to go back down. Okay. And do slow. You know. Okay. Re okay. Release the arms. Knees are soft. Deep breath, inhale, and as you exhale, slowly rise. Greetings, my name is Elle, and I'm here to share with you my vision. My vision is a fusion workout. It consists of balletic movement and yogic movement as well. So this fusion will have you working your core, which is your center of gravity, and conditioning and toning your legs, your upper body, your arms, and uh, finding yourself with a really toned, strong body, a nice straight back, and I'm gonna share with you my dream, and come along with me. It's a very quick workout, and I think you'll really enjoy yourself. So let's go. Greetings, my name is Yoga L, and I'm here to share with you my vision. My vision is a fusion between balletic movement and the yogic arts. So today I've prepared for you a nice workout. It's not long. It consists of conditioning uh, with the barefoot ballet wall workout, uh, which we're going to work our core, which is our center of gravity, as well as our legs and our arms. And we're going to hit the mat and we're going to do some, um, uh, some yoga movements that you'll find very easy. Um, some a bit challenging, but very, very good for your body. You're going to find yourself very strong with a nice straight back and a beautiful conditioned toned body. So let's go. Let's hit the bar or the wall. Greetings, I'm Elle, and I'm here to share with you my vision. My vision consists of balletic movement fused with yoga workout. And today I'm gonna share with you a barefoot ballet wall or bar workout that you can do at home. Whether you have a bar at home or a wall, that's fine, we're gonna do it. Um, and combine yogic art movements and you're going to have a lot of fun with me. It's a quick workout. It's going to strengthen your core, which is your center of gravity, your upper body, your shoulders, your pectoralis major and minor, as well as your legs to give you those beautiful dancer legs. So let's go. Let's hit the wall or the bar. Yeah? Hi, friends. OK, so now we're going to talk about the placement of the arms, the carriage of the arms. So in dance, we want to place the hand and the wrist joint below the shoulder joint. If you notice, we have a gradual slope here, and the elbow is not locked. Same thing with the right arm. OK, we start on the right side. So you want to make sure that the fifth pinky, the pinky, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, can you just cut that part out? Okay, so with the right hand, we just want to make sure that the pinky finger adheres to the fourth finger so that this doesn't happen. Okay, if your arm gets tired, you can always just lower it to first position, and that's fine. Okay, so the placement of the arm is the same as the left arm. We have this gradual slope. It's not back, and it's not forward. You have this gradual slope. You'll feel 
your muscles developing in your shoulders. It's very nice. It looks very beautiful. Okay, we're going to rotate out from the hips. Take the toes with us. Lift the toes. Separate. Elongate. And then lower them into the earth. And you're going to press through the first and fifth toes. Leave the center toes soft. Don't press them too much because they'll curl. And then we're going to start. We're going to start by taking the right foot and then rotate in, out, and back. Engage your core, and then out, and then in, and then out, in, and then back. And then to the side, same thing, and then in, and then side, and in, side, in, and then back, in, in, shoulders back, core is engaged. And then side, in, 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 and then close, up, rotate, and then here we are prepared for the contralateral side. First position, remember, you're going to rotate out from the hips and then up. And here we go, in, and close. How are you doing there? Good? And now take it to the side. Close. 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 Out. Close. Close. And now side. Two more times. And now out. Let me play a relevé, and here we are prepared for the next movement that we're going to do. With the arm out, we're going to take the leg out and then back, and then rond de jambe 20 times, okay? So if you're using the bar or the wall, this is fine. Here we go. Seven. Nine, last one. And now another set, two, four, six, seven, and ten. We're going to hold this up for a count of ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Now we're going to go reverse. Here we go. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Last one. Now another set. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hold it back. Ten, nine, eight. Shoulders back. Seven. How you doing? Five, four, three, two, and one. You're going to close front. Then you plie relevé. Here we go. And then you're going to take the leg front and then back. And now forward. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Last one, and here we go again. One, two. How are you feeling? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold ten. Nine, eight. Straight back. Seven, six. Tighten your core. Four, three, two, and reverse. One. Two, feeling good? Three, four, five, six, seven. Press through the first and fifth toe. Ten more. One, two, that's on your right foot. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hold ten, give me ten. Nine, straight back. Seven, eight, seven, whoops. Six, I'm real. Five, four, three, two, 
And one, good. Then we clear, relevé, rotate, and pause. Good job. Okay, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then the wall sweep. Okay, and then we'll go to yoga. Okay, this is the great one. Okay, you hear? How am I doing? Great, perfect. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Okay, friends. So this one is pretty intense. So we're going to prepare ourselves again. Now that you've had a sip of water and you've patted down your glow, because ladies don't sweat, we glow. Okay, so we're going to start with puente, 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 puente. You're going to brush forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, and back forward and back, and then we're going to repeat it on the back. We're going to do that four times, okay? And then slowly in our practice, we're going to increase it from four to six to eight to ten independently, okay? So let's begin. Deep breath, inhale. Remember your pinky and your fourth finger as you exhale. And let's begin. Puente, puente, puente. Puente, puente, puente. Ponte, 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 ponte. Brush forward, soft knee, forward, back. Keep your knees soft. Forward, forward, back, forward, and back. Now take it back and side, back, front and side, back, side, front and side. Now take it, brush back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, puente, 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 side, brush forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward and back. Puente, 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 puente. I'm getting confused up. I'm getting confused. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Tell me when. Yeah. Okay, so are you ready? Then here we go. Puente, puente, puente. Puente, puente, puente. Ponte, ponte, ponte. Ponte, ponte, ponte. Soft knee brush forward, back, forward and hold. Back, forward, back and hold. Forward, back, forward and hold. And back, forward and back and hold. Now we take it to the back and side. Front and side. Got it? Back and side. Ponte, ponte. Now brush back, forward, back and hold. Front and hold, back, and front, and hold. Ponte, 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 ponte. Now take it forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward, back, forward. How you doing? Back, forward, and back. Ponte, ponte. Ponte, 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 ponte. Back, hold, front, hold, back, hold, front, and close. Here we go. Left side. How are you feeling? You glowing? Here we go. First position, rotate out from the hips, prepare your arm, and ponte. Side, ponte, side, ponte, side, and side. Now bend the knee, soft knee. Hold, back, front, back, how you doing? Front, back, front, back. Ponte, side, side, ponte, ponte. Take it to the back and back. 
hold, front, hold, 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 pointe, and side, 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 and back, hold, 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 and close, and rest. Okay, so are you feeling the burn? Hopefully so. It's a good burn, and you're glowing, and it's beautiful. We're going to work our core, and we're going to focus on stabilizing our core as well. I want you to please keep in mind your, uh, your square, your shoulders, and your hips. We're going to be having a movement where we're swaying our leg left and right. I don't want to see you carrying your body left and right, okay? Just the leg movement. The leg could be high, but it can't be high if the torso is carried with you, okay? So when you employ this, if the leg is low, you're pinning your navel to your spine, and it looks like this is perfect and beautiful. This is incorrect, okay? So keep that in mind. 50 the right leg, 50 the left leg. We always start with the right leg, and we're going to start in first position. Rotate out from the hips. Lift the toes, elongate, separate, pr press the first and fifth toes into the earth. Um, engage your core and your gluteal regions, nice and tight. Okay, we're not, if you have a bar, you use the bar. If you have the wall, you use the wall. Okay, so here we begin. Right leg comes out, and one, two, four, six. See how I'm not turning? There we go. Ten more. Two, four, six, eight. 20, 2, 4, 30, 40, 50. Now hold to 10 counts. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Great job. Okay, let's prepare for the left side. And begin. Give yourself some space, some distance from the wall. Your foot is out. Rotate out from the hip and begin. 1, 2, ooh, 4. Feel that sweat? 10 more. 10. Give me 10 more. Come on. Ten more. Ten to go. Here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. You're you're an all star. You did great. Okay. Now we're gonna hit the mat for some yogic movements. You're a winner. Hello again. How are you feeling? You're feeling good? Um, you should be feeling good. I'm going to ask you at this time to just not drink any water, okay? Um, when we practice yoga, uh, we want to refrain from eating or drinking anything about an hour or two prior, just because we do inversions and such, and we don't um, want to aspirate any fluid or foods. And um, I, I would advise you prior to any exercise, if you, if you don't have an uh, exercise regimen currently, that you speak with your physician first. Okay, so this next asana is called dolphin raise. You need not have a towel if you have socks on. Uh, if you don't have socks on, you're gonna take your towel, place it on the earth. Now we're at the earth, not the floor, okay? <laughs> this is like yogic terms that we use. Okay, place it at your feet. And this is for core conditioning. So you're going to place your hands in prayer and go into your dolphin plank. You're going to come up and then lower. We need not do this fast. We're going to do this for a count of 10 times. So let's begin. And up. And we count on our head. Pull through your core. Try not to press through your hands or anything. This will help you with your forearm stands because we engage our core. 
We rely on it for strength. Whenever you're ready. Okay, so this next asana is one of my favorites. It's called Half Moon Pose in English, and it's wonderful for opening up the shoulder and the hip and giving you a renewal of energy as well as a cure for depression. Um, and also is wonderful for enhancing the arches of the feet. Just remember to ground down all four corners of your foot. You're going to press through the first and fifth toe of your supporting leg. Remember not to lock the knee. You're going to lift the muscles above the knee joint and keep the back of the knee soft. So the right foot is going to go north and the left foot is going to head west. Okay, so if you want to practice, you're going to just rock back and forth. Remember this knee is soft. It's not overly bent and it's not locked, okay? So you're just going to rock back and forth. Okay, and when you feel ready, Engage your gluteal muscles. I call these the spank muscles, the gluteal muscles, the core muscles, the sidewall muscles, which are the obliques, always include the lower abdomen. We tend to forget it at times, and the upper abdomen as well. So here we go. We're going to uh, cup our fingers. You can do a high cup or a wide cup. And don't lift the leg higher than the hip joint, because you're going to roll the hip open, flex the foot, lengthen the arm, and then roll the shoulder open. So your shoulder is in alignment with your hip joint. You're going to look up towards this beautiful spring sky that we have. It's May in New York City, and it's gorgeous. If you're more comfortable looking forward or down towards the earth, that's fine. If you have a block at home, you can use that for support. Even some books to just give you some extra height if you're new to um, the yogic world, that's fine. And breathe in, breathe out. When we breathe yogically, we breathe through our nasal passageways for a count of two and then pause and then a count of four. So our yogic breathing is <sighs> breathe in positive energy as you execute your asana and then release negative energy, unwanted um, thoughts or feelings or people, anything that's negative and blocking you in your path. Okay, so here we go, left side. So this time we're headed north. Uh, is this still north and, is it north and east? Or is it south? It's south and west, okay, with my feet this time. So you're just gonna rock back and forth until you get the hang of it, okay? Um, and then you're gonna come down nice and easy. You have the wall here, okay, to spot you. I don't want any injuries, please. And don't relift the leg higher. It's okay if it's lower. Roll out this hip, okay? Don't keep the hip down. Roll out the hip. If you have a mirror at home, you can use that mirror as you're executing this asana. And then look up towards the sky and breathe. As a yoga teacher, therapist, we're taught in class, you know, how long do you hold a pose for? Well, it's six yogic breaths um, on average. Or if you see the class falling apart at the seams, you stop. <laughs> That's the general rule. So you want to breathe in, breathe out. And if I'm here and you feel like you're falling apart at the seams, please, you're going to just come out of this asana nice and slow and then rise. Okay? We look within ourselves. Okay, yoga is about looking within and avoiding all external elements. So keep that in mind. We're not here to learn everything, to learn everybody, to know everybody. We're here to become aware. Thank you. Okay. For opening up the shoulders and the hip. For opening up the shoulders and the hip. That, that the right inflection just a little flaccid, faster. Shoulders and the hip. For opening up the shoulders and the hip. Perfect. Okay. Gluteal region. Is that what it was? Yeah. All right. So. So I repeat everything again. Yeah. 
Press your first and fifth toes into the earth, leaving the three center toes nice and soft. Press your navel to your spine and engage your gluteal muscles as well. Okay. Engage your core and your gluteal regions. Cool. Same, same exact place, a little bit. Okay. Engage your core and your gluteal regions. Engage your core and your gluteal regions. Engage your core and your gluteal regions. So our next asana is a one-legged balance, and I do want to explain about one-legged balances. Whenever we do one-legged balances, we are improving both hemispheres of our brain. MRI scans have uh, the results of uh, yogis over a 30 year period have not only shown that yogis have a, you know, a greater memory, um, but MRI scans have proven that um, both hemispheres of the brain are enhanced with regular yoga practice, including one-legged balances. So I feel it's very important for me to share my, some of my gifts with you. One being tree pose. Okay, so we're gonna start um, on our right leg you can stand against the wall if you feel a little insecure balancing without a wall or just come a bit forward, okay? And you're going to engage your core and your gluteal muscles. Like I said, the Spanx muscles, okay? So keep it, keep it nice and tight. Keep it right. Okay, so we take the heel and place it as close to the groin as possible. If you have difficulty balancing, bring the knee in. That should level out your hips. If this isn't working for you and the, the foot slides down to the knee, you're going to hit your knee and over time, that's going to wear out the knee joint causing osteoarthritis. So you want to place the foot over the ankle joint here, okay? So this is beautiful and perfect. This isn't, and this is beautiful and perfect, and this is beautiful and per perfect. So let's begin, okay? Tree pose. Breathing in, breathing out, focusing, and now lifting our palms to our third eye. And now up over our crown chakra. And now opening the arms, breathing in, breathing out. Remember, yoga simply is exercise without proper prana, which is breathing. And then open. And now you're going to create two mudras, first and second fingers. And now draw your hands back towards your heart chakra. Wonderful. And now just march it out, left and right. How'd you do? All right, left leg, here we go. Remember, focus. Drishti is a Sanskrit word for gaze point. So you may want to find something height leveled. I'm five foot six and a half, so I'm looking five foot four and a half down on the earth at a niche in the hardwood floor here in the studio, or um, maybe something ahead of me, but something that's not in motion, okay, where you can focus and balance and heal within. Here we go, so pass our throat chakra, our communication chakra, right to our third eye chakra. Elbows back and feel, feel energy in the backs of the shoulders, how you're developing muscle. And now elongate the arms, breathing in, breathing out. You're doing very well, I'm proud of you. Keep your core engaged. And now open, feel the backs of the shoulders, and then open again. Elbows are nice and soft, we never lock them out. Mudras first and second fingers. Mudras are beautiful, they're hand gestures, and they say a lot about oneself. And they also, um, they also really show creativity and self-expression in yoga. And when you practice, you'll notice how you feel doing your mudras. Now bring the hands in to the, towards your heart chakra, breathing in and out. And then march it out. It was wonderful. And now you're smarter than you were two minutes ago. Shall we move on? Are you ready? Yep. Hi, okay, so we're going to hit the mat, and I'm going to show you a few asanas that I think that you'll love, that will strengthen you. And for our ladies, you know that we have stronger lower bodies than men do. We 
push out babies and um, we want to work on creating a stronger upper body so we can not only carry those beautiful babies we push out but so we can carry our produce and um, things we go shopping for and when the concierge or the doorman says Miss so-and-so can I carry that for you say no thanks I got those yoga arms okay like I do all the time okay so here we go we're gonna plank and this is why we plank so we can create strong upper body muscles. We have the pectoralis major and minor, we have the entire abdomen, we have the fronts of the shoulders and the arms as well. When we do our planks we're going to separate each finger, create a little dome in our fingers, press through the fingertips as well. If you have wrist issues you're going to make a fist instead and rely on your fist and and remember not to let the weight reside in your wrist joints or your palms, okay? Your shoulders go over your wrist. Don't lock out, okay? You can either press the knees down their hip width or go into your full plank. Lift your navel to your spine here. Take a nice deep breath. And now roll the elbows in lower. Chaturanga Dandasana. And then push the hips forward for your upward facing dog. Try and see if you can lift those beautiful legs up off the earth. Engage the gluteal muscles. Look up towards this beautiful sky. Life is beautiful. And downward facing dog. Rely on your core muscles to lift your entire body. You're going to either align your ears with your upper arms or if you have the flexibility, release the backs of the shoulders and lower the crown chakra to the earth and breathe in and out freeing the backs of the shoulders and not locking the elbows and lifting the upper, the leg, right leg to the sky, keeping the front of the hip down and then lowering and now the left leg lifting, lifting it up towards the sky and now the left leg lifting it up towards the sky, front of the hip down, we're not doing a dog split so the front of the hip is down Breathing in, breathing out, and then lowering, bending the knees, and walking the feet towards the hands, Uttanasana. Breathing in, breathing out. Inhale, and as you exhale, you're going to slowly rise. Okay, deep breath, inhale. Exhale, lift the belly as you float down. Inhale, look up, chest lift and hold and exhale down. Take two steps back into your plank pose. And nice and gently, you're gonna come into your dolphin plank. Lift the toes up off the earth on the right side. How we doing, good? And now lower, and then the left side, lift the toes up off the earth. And then lower. And now walk your feet up into your dolphin. Feet are hip width, you're going to align your ears with your upper arms. Breathe in, breathe out. And now lower the knees and stretch into child's pose. Okay, and now for your side plank. Okay, we're going to take the right palm Open up the fingers nice and wide. Shoulder is over the wrist. See what I did? I didn't start from back here. I came forward. I didn't lock out my elbow either. Engage your core. Don't cross the foot backward or forward. Stack your joints and then balance. This is side plank. You're going to hold this and breathe. Keep breathing. You're doing great. And then lower, and we're going to repeat this on the contralateral side. Here we go. Get me here? Can you get me? Mm -hmm. Okay. So prepare your hand. Remember, your shoulder is over your wrist joint. Stack your joints. You're strong enough to do this. And keep breathing.
Good job. And now let's lower. Okay, take a break for a moment. Breathe in and breathe out. How was that? Eh. Uh, upper body muscles. Go down on muscles. Upper body muscles. Upper body muscles. Okay. And then, um... Okay, friends, glad you're still with me. We're going to take our right hand, our left palm, place it up, and then inhale, and then exhale. And as you execute this, if you feel at some point this is a little bit much for you, you can always lower the left leg, not an issue. Breathe in and breathe out yogically. Remember, inhale, exhale. Okay, now swap it out. Here we go. It's a variation of locust. Feels good, doesn't it? Okay, now take the arms back. Lower the head for a moment. We're going to do a whole sequence of locust. I love this. It's so good for strengthening the spine, the sh shoulders, the mid-back and such. So we're going to inhale. Drop the shoulders. Friends, what I'd like you to do is create distance from the shoulders to the ears. So don't shrug the shoulders. Draw them down and back and then lift your upper body. Draw your chin out and elongate the neck. And now with the palms down, Create a star with your body because you know you are a star. <laughs> Widen those legs. Chin up. And now palms forward. Take the legs in ever so slightly, just ever so slightly. And then create that star again. Feels so good, doesn't it? Now here we go. Draw the shoulders down, back, again, and away from your ears, okay? And now release and allow yourself to release. Okay, so before we go into Shavasana, I just want to say a few things. Don't feel guilty if you take an hour's time to take a yoga class or a conditioning class of your choice. You cannot be of service to others and take you t until you take care of your needs first. Can I say that again? Don't do this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, before we go into Shavasana. Okay. Now, before we close, as we go into Shavasana, I just want to say a few things first. You cannot be of service to anyone until your needs are met. So don't feel guilty if you take an hour's time each day or a few days a week to devote to your yoga practice or to a conditioning class. You need to take care of your health. You are very important to me and to your loved ones, your family, your friends, and your coworkers. And you need to be healthy. Let yoga be thy medicine and medicine be thy yoga. Health insurance is really sick insurance. I'm gonna show you Shavasana. And this is how we do Shavasana. The body cools down, so you may want to actually put some socks on or a sweater on. You're going to Rotate out from the hip, and then widen the legs. Palms are always up as in an offering. And then you're going to close your eyes. Keep your head in alignment with your spinal column. And you're going to think about something positive. It could be for yourself. That's not selfish. OK, we always have a devotional prayer, an intention of goodwill in our yogic practice. And um, it's either for someone else, for ourselves, for our troops, our nation, a co-worker, a loved one, a pet. Um, oftentimes it can be for yourself. Again, you're not being selfish. You're taking care of your needs. Okay, so as we cool down, as the lights go down, six minutes of Shavasana, this time is for you. Thank you for joining me. I'm Yoga L. I love you and I'll see you again.